Hi there. Uh, take a look at this bit of a novelty device that I made, uh, I think last year or so. But it is basically a 12 volt to 240 volt AC power inverter to tell you I put together. Circuit is very basic. It uses uh, an oscillator to drive two MOSFETs, a uh, half bridge, which uh, in turn pull each secondary winding of the transformer to the negative of the battery with the positive being fed into the centre tap and this was a standard mains transformer that I uh, basically I've used I've basically run it in reverse uh, so basically you're getting your 240 volts AC from your secondary winding now it's a square wave output because uh, the way the, the driver circuit works it's very basic in fact I've got the circuit diagram off the internet I did a slight modification to it and I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but but it's based around the uh, CD4047 which is like, a, they call it a flip-flop oscillator the 12 volts DC comes in, two filter caps and the frequency is uh, locked at 50 Hz with this small uh, trimmer uh, potentiometer meter here now to keep the frequency stable, just like drifting, what I've done, I've set the frequency for so the circuit operates on 10 volts DC to do that I used a 220 ohm resistor, high wattage and uh, a, 10, a 10 volt Zener diode to just to clamp the uh, driver circuit at 10 volts. So the out, the output comes along these two wires. Through, through two, I think it's 220 ohm resistors again, some uh, quarter watt resistors down there. These drive the gates of these MOSFETs. These are IF, IFP260 MOSFETs, so they're, they're high current and they're also rated for high voltage spikes. I mean, the circuit runs on 12 volts. It's, you're going to see 24 volts AC across the uh, two primary windings. Sorry, the yeah, the two primary windings. As you see, I've attached the positive. The positive actually comes straight from the battery through that block, and then straight to there. Whilst the positive also goes to the driver circuit, and negative going to the driver circuit. The two gate drives coming from the circuit go to the gates of the MOSFETs, which in turn switches them on alternatively on and off. So each each side of the primary one is being pulled to the negative of the battery. The circuit isn't brilliant because uh, as the battery voltage drops, the output voltage drops considerably. I mean, when you if you, if you were to operate this circuit from a, a car system with the alternator running, which is about 14, can be up to 14 and a half volts, you get about 270 volts out, out of the transformer and running it from a battery that's quite flat. Let's say it's 11 volts, you get about 200 volts out of it. So it's it's not it's got no form of regulation. So the output is square wave. So I'll, I'll power it up and. Uh, we test a few loads with it, so make sure they're the right way round. Oh, right now. The if you don't you can hear it on the camera, the transformer is making quite a light buzz. That's because it's operating a square wave rather than a, a, a sine wave. And I've got a power meter plugged into a small trailing socket, which is soldered to the output. I haven't connected the earth because there's no point because it's it none of the supplies reference to anything. So. So the volts is 245 at the moment, and I'm just going to check the back 12 volt DC battery voltage. So I mean, it's 220 volts DC ranging. Would help if I had it on DC. There you go. So it's, that's the, that's the battery voltage. It's actually starting to drop a little bit now, so it's on 244. It's now this plug is actually connected to this lead with a normal light socket on the end of it, and this is a uh, this is a, a compact fluorescent lamp with a glass dome on. It's uh, rated at 20 watt, 145 milliamps, 220 to 240 volts, 50-60 hertz. And there we go. You see, it's actually pulled the voltage down to 239 now because it's just drawing a 20 watt load off the battery. And it, what did you see? It's got stamped on it 145 milliamps. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to amps. No, there you go. 150 milliamps or 145 milliamps. Not bad. Back to volts. And uh, if we measure the watts, it's saying 12. Point 12.7 but the bulb hasn't quite warmed up yet because it is a compact fluorescent lamp they do take a take a few minutes to warm up to full brightness and the frequency is 50.2 hertz 
that's what it's shooking at the moment. I can alter it to 60 hertz, but we don't use 60 hertz in the UK. We're on uh, 50 hertz, the same as Europe, and uh, so that's what I set the circuit to. Uh, now, one thing, I'm going to disconnect this now. I'm going to plug in an incandescent lamp bulb. Now, this is this is a uh, 60 watt incandescent lamp bulb, and it's uh, the reason why it's this shape is it's basically uh, it's a reproduction of some of the early incandescent lamp bulbs, uh, light bulbs. Sorry, they're right there. So. This is 60 watt and it actually produces quite a nice orange light rather than a white light and uh, you have know, a little bit of full brightness. It's rated at 60 watts so it's actually drawing 53.4 watts and the power VA will be the same. I'm not sure how that actually works with the power factor in the VA being as it being a sine wave but sorry a square wave output so Go back onto volts, so what we've got it's 223.8 and what's happening is, is it's draining the battery because it's not really saying a small battery so the, the, if the battery volts drops a little bit the output volts drops a lot if I disconnect that it's gone back up to 241 now this was obviously putting a load on the battery <clears throat> now I wanted to try this with a, an inductive load so off camera well, if I can bring it forward a bit, there's actually a small desk fan. And then I've actually seen it in shot. You can just about see the top corner of it anyway, but I've uh, got the plug to that. And it's been an inductive load. You can see how it bears on a square wave rather than the usual AC sine wave. So if I unplug my lamp holder and plug this in. It is actually going, if I unclip it, there you go, it's, uh, it's going around, it's actually working quite well on a... Uh... Oh, and it's just fallen off. It still works. No, it's not a very good clip on it and the table's a bit too large for the clamp, but yeah, it's uh, operating on. It, don't stay on. it won't stay on there, but... It's operating on a 50 hertz square wave, so I was, uh, I was actually quite surprised. It seems to run at the same full speed. I, you know, I mean, it's so many watts is it's drawing. So we're going to watts. It's drawing 14 and a half watts. I've put it onto VA. It's drawing 25.2 volt amps. So there is a difference in the power factor. And if I check the power factor, 50 hertz. Power factor is uh, 0.58, so so I'll unplug this fan and I'll put it away for it falls off again. Now I'm going to really test it. Right, this is a 500 watt jigsaw. Just clip that back into the volts. Five hundred watt jigsaw plugged in. Let's see what happens. As you can see, it pulled the voltage right down because that transformer is only rated for uh, that's actually a 150 VA transformer, and I've just tried to pull 500 watts through it. I mean, I'm not even cutting anything, so that's quite a bit of a, a load test for it. And plus, it probably dropped the voltage of the battery a lot as well. Uh, the MOSFETs aren't really getting any aren't warm. They're, they're actually quite cold. I mean, they are screwed to a suitable heat sink and. Uh, I've got that on the plastic lid there because this is a steel uh, welding table so I didn't want the pins to short out on the uh, table. So uh, there you have it, a homemade uh, DIY power inverter. Not very practical, a bit bulky considering you can pick up a 150 watt power inverter for about 10 quid from Matlins and you know and it wouldn't, even if I was to put this into a box or a case and it, these, these are obviously inverter pieces and they're, they're they're much smaller. But, uh, sorry, vertebrates are based on like a high free. They don't have a big mains transformer like that to step the voltage up. They 
they convert the 12 volts DC to 340 volts DC using a high voltage DC, uh, sorry, a high powered DC to DC converter. That's, and then the 340 volts is then converted into uh, AC using uh, high voltage MOSFETs. So basically all of the, the, the power transforming is, is done through a high frequency transform, which are about 10 times smaller than them. And it just uses uh, semiconductors to turn the high voltage DC into the high voltage uh, AC output. Yep, there you have it. See you later.